Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of Street Fight Radio. Oh shoot, my mic just fell over. Hold on a second, let me restart that. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. <clears throat> hey everybody, welcome to Street Fight Radio. I've got a special union update for y'all. And if you have any of these, please reach out to the show, streetfightradio at gmail.com. I'd love to spread the message and information about any campaigns that are going on in your area. But this is one of the first ones that we ever reported on that, that uh, you know, we tried to give as much as publicity as we could do. And it was happening in the Pacific Northwest uh, at Burgerville, which is like a s- small time, you know, local, everything's made with love type fast food restaurant that treats their employees like shit and even set up uh, Jordan, uh, uh, who we talked about several years ago and then actually did show up to our Portland, Oregon show. Uh, one of the other people that was at the uh, Portland show is a current Burgerville employee and, you know, rabble rouser. That's Jimmy. And then we also have uh, along with him, Nick. So thank you for being here today. How's it going? Great. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, so, I mean, you've been going at this for a while, Jimmy. Uh, you did the show with us. When was is That was earlier this year? I can't even remember. Oh, my God. I know. The time all blurs together, right? It's January. It's when you were in Portland. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, in January. Um, so, uh, how long have you been with Burgerville now? I have worked at Burgerville for two years. Okay. And how about you, Nick? Uh, since April last year, so a year. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 some time. And um you know what I, I guess there's people that don't know what has happened. Would you mind to give us a little history of of what's gone on so far? Hell yeah. So we um the Burgerville Workers Union has recently celebrated its third year anniversary. So that means we for three years we have been public with our campaign for a living wage at Burgerville. Uh, the way it started was just a group of Burgerville workers got together um, and we're talking to each other saying like, how can we make things better? Um, let's unionize. Um, and since the very start of our campaign, we have demanded uh, several things, including a $5 an hour raise, um, which the minimum wage at the time when the campaign started was about $9. Okay. Um, so that would have brought us up to around 15 um, at the time, uh, the demand is still the same. We're, we are also demanding, um, uh, fair scheduling, uh, better benefits. Um, so a lot has happened, right? Since we've gone public, um, we had a long fight to get recognition. Uh, we wanted voluntary recognition, but we didn't get it. So we filed for NLRB elections at, uh, five different stores and have won every single one. So now for a year, we've been in contract negotiations with Burgerville. Uh, the one year anniversary of contract negotiations was very recently. Um, and at this point, we are entering the end game. Um, we are really trying to ramp up the fight um, because we have made some progress at the bargaining table, right? For things like uh, tips, um, stronger anti-discrimination language, uh, just cause employment, Uh, shop stewards and stuff like that but we have not made any progress on our economic proposals and that's the proposal for the five dollar an hour raise so burgerville at first was very much against this but have have given uh, given in at this point um to the non-material concerns right they have we have reached some tentative agreements i would not characterize them as uh being um approving of what we're doing okay for sure (laughs) but we have made progress we have made progress right i mean i'm i you know the story that got us into this was there was an employee named jordan that was given a a bagel and a manager told and the jordan was heavily into the the unionizing efforts and Jordan was given a bagel, told he didn't have to pay or told to just eat it and that he could pay for it after his break and then was fired as if he stole that. Um, and even though he was told to take it. So 
I definitely don't want to paint them as being friendly, but it is interesting <laughs> to hear you say that they have um, at least uh, negotiated on some of the other things. I mean, is yeah. there a, is there a law against how long this can go on? I mean, I can't believe it's been three years now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't think there are any laws on how long it can go. I've heard of uh, contract negotiations that have gone on for three years. Like, ours has only gone on for a year, and I don't want it to go on for much longer. But um, Burgerville, I think, is well within the right to waste our time. Right, and and you're looking to get um, a finalized. What is it? A finalized. Is it votes from employees or a, a contract agreement with Burgerville? So we've already uh, gotten votes at five different shops, and there's 42 locations uh, in total. Um, but yeah, the, this is a, an interesting bit of like how like unions operate for folks who don't know. Like um, we did, we ran NLRB elections. The NLRB is a National Labor Relations Board, which is the government agency that mediates. Uh, labor issues uh, between unions and employers. Um, so the votes have already happened uh, at the five shops, including ours. And the union of, like actually officially represents the workers at those shops. Um, so at this point, we're just trying to uh, get our first contract. Okay. And uh, so Nick, I mean, what, what was your experience before uh, Burgerville? Have you had any sort of uh, union experience? Yeah. Um, I worked at Fred Meyer before I worked at Burgerville and the, the union reps there were much less active and there was a lot less employee participation in the, the, any of the unionizing that happened there. We, so there was no act, there was no contract negotiation. There was no fighting or anything. Um, but we did have an official union. They didn't really do anything and i have a feeling that that they probably gave into a lot of uh a lot of compromise with the company that probably kind of hindered their ability to actually help the 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 workers yeah i've had that i had a similar experience that was a very early experience when uh i was a teenager i worked for meyer which is like a large department store groceries and everything else under the sun Mm -hmm. And they, we had a union, but it was just in name, really. It was just like a seven dollars that they took from every check. Exactly. Um, there's very little representation uh, or pushback. Yeah, and I remember the union dues were weirdly steep, considering that they there really was no actual action happening. Right. Well, and, and you know, I, I mean, and that's that's a that is part of the truth. I mean, of where they ended up um, and where they've been beaten down to in this country and, you know, now trying to form new ones. It, you can see, even though th they've become so friendly, they became so friendly to management, they still more than anything do not want there to be a union. <laughs> like course, there's just yeah. everything working against you uh, to prevent this from happening. So um, has, has there... Have there been any um, new issues or disputes that have come in, come up over the last year since contract negotiations have started? Yeah, I mean, they. It's interesting that you brought up Jordan, right? That was a sort of um, that was like a big story early on in our campaign. Uh, Burgerville's retaliation against Jordan. Burgerville has kept doing that over and over and over. Again. Oh, really? Even now, even recently, yeah. Like one of the most recent. Uh, instances of this sort of thing happening um, was a worker named Jaren who um, threw away a piece of fish that had a bite taken out of it that he found um, and then they fired him for it. They accused him of having eaten it, which was not true. He just threw it away. Um, and and he was a very strong union supporter. So it's they they're not even creative. They just do this sort of thing over and over again, even now, even during uh, contract negotiations. I hadn't heard about that. Yeah, it's fucked. It just seems like a way to to kind of took stoke the flame. I don't I don't understand that. That's like a terrible decision. Yeah, I was gonna say, what is does that strengthen your resolve? Does that does that make more people um, interested in getting involved or? 
I think hopefully, right. Um, and I mean, I think what it always takes is getting organized, you know, if, for example, like if Jaron were to just get retaliated against and we weren't to do anything, I don't think that would make us a lot stronger. But thankfully, like we went to his shop, we had a meeting with the workers there. Um, and we, you know, we continue the work. Um, is this a, is this a shop that isn't represented yet? It is represented. It is okay. Okay. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Gladstone shop. Oh, so that was one of the early uh, uh, election uh -huh. parks, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> I, I mean, and you know, I mean, they can get away with whatever they want, and they have their technical reason, and they can run with it. Um, That's right. Who has the money to fight, fight back in court, and who would you know <clears throat> would want to? So. Jesus, I didn't even realize that was happening. So, uh, what? Um, I mean, I guess how has how has uh, the work changed for you, Jimmy? I mean, is there a target on your back at all? Do you feel? Do you, <laughs> I mean, are you feeling? You feeling the heat? Oh, totally. They hate me. Um, the head of HR like hates me. Um, uh, once I the one bargaining session I attended, I read a statement. Um, about how Burgerville is not keeping us safe from fascism. Um, I, you may have heard there's like a big sort of uh, fascist threat in Portland, as in a lot of cities. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get too much into like all the things that have been happening, but uh, a week after I read that statement, I got suspended from work um, and they denied me union representation at the meeting. Um, thankfully, I stood up for myself, uh, my union rep, a coworker of mine also stood up for me um, and we kept sort of pushing back on that. And then at the negotiating table, we uh, won stronger protection for union representation in the workplace. But yeah, yeah I mean, that's great. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's tough. Yeah. They don't, they're not always the nicest. Well, yeah, I'm just, I just am wondering like how you avoid, I mean, if they're coming after everything, I mean, do you, do you have to ask for permission to throw away? Any any sandwiches now? I mean, I don't know. I get paranoid about it sometimes, but my shop, honestly, like the man, most of the managers are pretty chill. Okay, uh, I'm like really thankful for that. Yeah, we have the kind of managers who wish they had their own union because <laughs> because most people who are either AMs or TMs, they it, it, they're still treated like garbage by corporate. Um, you, you know what I I agree. You know that's you're you're being controversial right now. But uh, yeah, when it comes to just the person that's supposed to keep the shop running, that and head of like food service, uh, when it comes to making burgers and fries, they have to deal with some of the worst of the customers, like in some of the worst shit. Yeah, and and True. you know, and a lot of it, and a lot of it comes down to. What I've always said with when it comes to McDonald's and Burger King and stuff is just poor organization from the top down. They just <laughs> don't uh, they don't set anyone up for success. Nobody is a lot. No, they don't. Nobody has been there for longer, you know, than a few months in a right. lot of places. Yeah, and uh, there's it, it's, it's everybody's first day all the time, you know, except for like one manager. Yeah, it's a it's a like a worker's conveyor belt. It's it's really bad. Um I, and I've noticed that, uh, like, unless obviously, if they're you know, if they're union buster or they're they're going above and beyond to meet the ridiculous demands of corporate uh, that they don't need to satisfy in the first place, because it's not worth corporate's time to replace them half the time. Uh huh. It like screw them. But right. I, I've noticed that that if there was any way to form a greater bond be between like. The, the workers who are unionizing and the managers, which would be really hard to do, obviously, because of the policies uh, regarding relationships between those um, different groups. That would be really good because pretty much anybody who isn't a GM gets screwed. Anybody who's salaried who works at Burgerville works ridiculous overtime hours and does not get paid for those hours. Right. 
Yeah, it seems like y'all could just like mutiny the whole thing and just like cut off cut off anybody that isn't working in the store, making right? sure that the food gets served. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you, Brett. People <laughs> um, of those greater intersectionality, but I also recognize it'd be very hard to do, especially since a lot oh. of managers aren't cool. Oh, and for are sure, really awful to the workers. I mean, yeah, I, I mean I, that, it's unfortunate. It is really unfortunate that. You, you see the way that somebody will give up that much of their life, you know, 60 hours a week for something yeah. um, as stupid as drive through hamburgers. Right. And then it kind of makes sense that they would be willing to comply with a lot of rules that get workers in trouble or, or, or hurt right. people because they're, they're, you become bitter when you work 60 hours a week. Right. And right. you start, you stop thinking about other people when and, you... and it, it becomes harder to like, to, to kind of empathize as much. I, I agree. I mean, I mean, you feel like you're forced into the position. You wake up and you think that you are you just have to do this horrible thing for 12 hours a day and oh, that yeah. everybody else deserves the same because life ain't easy or something. Exactly. And and it's usually the people who get screwed over the worst um, where it, because they develop in kind of this inner hatred that's where a lot of the the, the bootstraps mentality kind of kind of can come out of nowhere. Someone you might expect to be to be like kind of worker worker friendly and 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 believing in in the union and all that. They're they're more likely to develop a lot of really unhealthy attitudes towards towards just working in general. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think a lot of us, like even workers, I think, like end up having a lot of uh, sort of toxic attitudes, you know, that that we get from capitalism. And I think I do think like at the end of the day, right, the the people we're fighting against right now um, is corporate. It's the people who own the capital, who own the property. Right. Um, yeah. You know, sure. and I think that that is something I try to emphasize to to manage. Oh. Yeah, I'm hey, for solidarity in this. Fight. You know what? Could you repeat that? It kind of went in and out. There's a oh, starting from here. where? Um, yeah, I guess just, just like, that, like the just like ten seconds ago. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like a lot of people um, develop um, a lot of toxic attitudes from capitalism, workers and managers alike, and the the real people that we're fighting against in the struggle are corporate, are the owners of capital and the property, um, the ones who are who are making the profit um, rather than just like managing all of us. Right. Um, it, it's the idea that it, it needs to get to the point where where pretty much everybody, workers, managers, et cetera, understand that it's all of us together versus like the very small elite who control all of the means, right? That's right. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's a challenge too, especially when you're just trying to get on with your life and you feel everybody feels like they're, you know, walking their own razor's edge. And it is, it's scary to join up with a bunch of people and have, you know, faith or, or, or just even consider the idea that, right. that people would help, help you out or be there for you if things went wrong, you know, or, or want to fight for right, for everybody's right to, you know, uh, a fair workplace, you know? Yeah. I mean, right. Like it's super understandable that, um, like organizing is hard. Get, starting a union, organizing a union is hard because I think people do, do have a lot of fear and a lot of well-founded fear, um, to fight for yourself and to fight for your coworkers involves taking a degree of risk. Yeah. Um, I, and I think that is why it's so important, why it's so important that our union win this fight to show that like the risk is worth it, um, that you can organize with your coworkers um, and you can actually make things better. You don't have to just take what the boss gives you. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's why I love this. Uh, I love the spirit of what you're doing and <clears throat> I think it is important and I, I think that they can't, you know, union is something that can be reborn in this new day and age. You know, we've seen yeah. wildcat strikes from the teachers unions, which were awesome and they got the goods. So yeah. um, it's a new, it's a new era of this. And I think this is a great, 
sector to get into, especially with, you know, <clears throat> the whole Burgerville, we're clean and, and local and fresh and all that stuff. You know, those people have to pay big time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And hey, Brett, I can I mention something? There's something I really wanted to plug into here. Um, uh -huh. th there's something that a lot of people don't know about Burgerville um, that's like fucking bonkers. Um, I sent you this video. I don't know if you saw it, but it's Burgerville is part of this evangelical business network called the Nehemiah Project. Um, they're, you know, they... They do a lot of things. One of the things they do is called biblical entrepreneurship. And what that involves um, includes sending uh, people to Haiti to convert people to Christianity and start uh, Christian businesses. Um, and Burgerville is like a, re is a, is an active member of this network. Um, Oh no! Well, yeah. We might just have to advocate for getting rid of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's no, really trippy. Like again, I never... mutiny sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I never thought that when I got involved um, in this campaign that I would be fighting against people literally complicit in missionary colonialism. Yeah, um, it's like too. It's too on the nose. Sounds like yeah. This seems like a fucking parody. I was in like I was a, like eleven months. 12 months, whatever, into working at Burgerville before I knew this. It's kind of insane how, like, it's it's veiled. Like, it's not immediately present. You don't know if you're just, like, entry-level position. But I think they do train some of the managers. Yeah. And the corporate people. Really? Yeah, it's a little unclear to me what entirely they do with Burgerville. But um, I know, like, the internal slogan at Burgerville is serve with love. Um, and that comes straight from the Nehemiah Project. If you go to their website, there's like a video uh, and then it says serving with love. And it's like, it felt like I was fucking like in the matrix when I like yeah. woke up. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like the, the, the Dharma initiative from Lost. That sounds, wow. It's, it's weird. <laughs> Burgerville's weird. Also their CEO, fucking trippy, Jill Taylor, uh, at a recent bargaining session, she... Um, Oh my God. She came to bargaining for the first time. And like, after like almost a year of negotiations and then she starts off the conversation, like she gives a little like speech uh, that begins uh, by saying there are about 50 harvests left. And then she goes on to talk about the, cl the coming climate catastrophe, oh. which is cool. It's cool for her to acknowledge it. I don't understand why that means we can't get a living wage. Um, well, yeah. The, the statement after <laughs> that's the one that really captures me. Uh, if you remember, um, what the one because she also said that she wants part of the, the task of Burgerville is to bind workers' souls to their bodies. Um, if you know what that means, I would love for you to explain it to me because I have no idea what the fuck that means. So, if you if you cook exactly 6,000 burger patties, uh, you, you, you will survive the rapture, you will, you will send to heaven. <laughs> so true, yeah. I would expect 7,000, but. <laughs> uh, better we'll see. We'll negotiate better. that. We'll negotiate that. Yeah. So I wanted to go back. I'm gonna have. I'll have Brian look all this up. We might have to do a deep dive on the crazy behind all of it. But I wanted to ask. Um, I mean, what have you learned from this process when it comes to like relating with other employees, especially the ones that that maybe aren't, you know, the most friendly. Yo, I mean, I, I've I've learned so much. I've learned so much. Getting involved with this union has changed my freaking life. Um, I, I think the most exciting thing I've learned is that um, a lot of workers, a lot of fast food workers, are ready for revolution. Right. Um, for real, they know what's um, up. They they're not stupid. They know they know they're in a they know their class. They know their place. Totally. Um, and the ones who don't, who aren't there, right, um, oh, you know, it's just like connecting with people, meeting people where they're at, um, is, it's worth it. It's worth the work. Um, well, it's just, it's, and it's real stuff. I mean, it's like, it's one of those things where so much of life is people pondering, like, what's meaningful, what should I do, this or that, you know, I want to pursue these projects of whatever it may be but like once you're in the fight for like better working conditions everything the perspective becomes very clear you know you realize what's yes, important yes. 
you realize what's important. You feel that, you know, pushing back is something that is important. It's not just like beating a boss in a video game. You're actually <laughs> taking on the real boss in life. <laughs> you know, like that. Yeah. That is rewarding in a way that you don't know until you go for it, you know? Yeah. And, it, and it's the work of building a better world, you know, um, and of building solidarity. Um, at our three year anniversary, like we, a bunch of us went around and sort of like gave toasts and it's just been incredible to see the community that has formed from this, um, in a world that is so alienated, um, and isolated that like truly a better world is possible, uh, if we stand together. I mean, it's it's like dancing, dude. Like the dance floor will be empty until one silly person goes out there and does it by themselves, and all of a sudden, everybody else feels comfortable. It's, That's right. People I mean, we are, got another we got another burger union here in Portland. The little big burger with the little big union. You talked to them. Yeah, I talked uh, to them. Yeah, yeah. They saw what we were doing, and they came to our union hall, and they were like, "Can can you help organize a union?" Um, and we hope that that just continues. And our campaign, right, owes a lot to the fight for 15. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, and, and that, I mean, they're still doing a lot, uh, even more for just they were talking about some of the sexual harassment claims in McDonald's. I saw some recent reporting on that um, and things beyond just the $15 an hour. Yeah. Um, I mean, people are very aware of what's going on. Um, what is the best way to, to keep up with what you're doing? So follow, yeah, follow our Facebook page. Okay. Um, sign a boycott pledge. You can do that at boycottburgerville.com. There is a, a continuing active boycott on all Burgervilles until, um, until we sign a contract. And then also if, if you live in Portland and you have any skills at all you'd like to lend to the movement. Uh, maybe you're good at talking to people. Maybe you're good at graphic design. Maybe you like to write. Anything at all, um, we would love the help. Uh, you can send an email to burgervilleworkersunion at gmail.com to get plugged in. Uh, because we are in the end game, uh, and we are going to need to really ramp up the pressure uh, because unless – uh, the workers stand up and the community stands up with us. Uh, Burgerville is going to keep dragging their feet and wasting our time. So, uh, so Nick, how has been uh, uh, being a part of the campaign? How how has that affected things for you, like in your life, or what have, have you learned? What have you learned from it? I think that before I worked at Burgerville, I didn't even think that anything like this could happen. Um, just like with a, with an entry level job like this, uh, at minimum wage, I just hadn't considered the idea of a labor movement reaching this extent. And I think it's amazing. I think that any job that takes a large amount of your time, uh, should provide you, it should give you the, the chance for a life. And I feel like for a lot of people, they, they, they can't experience that. Like we have a guy at our Burgerville who I think he recently had a daughter and he's always talking about how he literally doesn't have extra money or extra time um, to just enjoy himself, to, to indulge in anything. It's all, it's always family or Burgerville like 24 seven. And I'm just, it really sucks because just getting paid more alone would make it having an actual hobby more accessible for him, I imagine. But there, there are you know thousands of those stories uh, every everywhere. Yeah, we we watched that show on our Patreon bonus feed. We watched the uh, undercover boss show, <laughs> and I mean, you know, I mean, ninety percent of them are seriously just like glass-eyed sharks that <laughs> don't. I don't think give a shit at all. But there is the occasional person that's just like you know they realize like holy shit this person is suffering right now and they'll give them like a quarter million dollars or something crazy um but they just it's just so empty when you watch that stuff because it's just feels like the lottery it just feels like regular life again it feels like you could go to you can go to any taco bell fast food restaurant 
customer service retail job and pulls for somebody from there and they're going to tell you that you know their family is being brought down by fucking medical bills or, or right. that you know they don't have x you know they're stressed to hell because they can't afford to go out and buy some, or you know and get something for themselves you know um I mean, I, I think that, you know, I, I have a weird relationship sometimes with the way that I talk about my parents because my household was pretty kind of chaotic and a, a little more on edge than than the, the normal household. But then I think back and like my dad was working like, you know, four tens and wow. my mom was working. Uh, my mom was working a job after she got home sometimes. So. Like there was, it's just constant working. It you don't have a life at that point. Like you just are angry and going on to the next thing, and you're just pissed about it. Like it, it's really shitty. And I don't, <clears throat> I, I don't know why we can't advocate for something better. Even though, like you said, when you talk to people face to face, everybody kinds of get kind of gets it that we have to have a, a complete revolution in the way that we do things. There's still that really unhealthy mindset that people think because their job is socially not considered, you know, on the same level as something like being an engineer or like a programmer, therefore they don't deserve better. Yeah. Which just doesn't make sense. And and it's weird too, because there's a lot of overlap between uh, the kind of evangelical like fundamentalism that drives things like the Nehemiah project uh, you'd expect, just given the very core values of like Christian doctrine, that everybody has a right to live, right? All all human beings deserve a right to a life. Yeah. But then, there's the same people are advocating for for workers who don't get to experience anything for themselves uh, to continue that kind of oppression. Mm -hmm. And I will say we do get we do get good support from the faith community here in Portland. That's cool. um, yeah, it's really cool. Um, yeah, and really just like, come on, Burgerville, <laughs> better. Um, so I mean, so so what's coming up? What's what's the what's the future look like? What are you focusing on? Winning this fight. The most recent thing that happened. Um, our most recent uh, contract negotiation session, um, we so it's been like about like three or four times. I can't remember exactly that they have come with their counter proposal of thirteen cents. I don't know if I, I mentioned that. Holy we, shit! Yeah, 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 yeah. We asked for five dollars, and they have again and again and again just said thirteen cents. What um, is that? Is that some sort of unlucky number type thing? <laughs> it feels like a threat, right? Um, and so, you know, we, we've gone to this point where we're like, you know, we, we don't really want to talk more until you get us a better offer. And they're like, okay, we'll give you a better offer. Uh, right before our most recent contract negotiations, they emailed us saying, we still can't give you a better offer. Um, so then we canceled, um, and we held, uh, pickets at two stores. Um, and Burgerville can expect a lot. What was Sorry, that? What? We held pickets at two stores. What's Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Burgerville can expect um, a lot more stuff like that um, if they continue to give us a shitty deal. Uh, what, uh, how, I mean, are you, are you, are you, are you both in the same store? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, is there anything else you wanted to get in there before we leave? Just follow us, boycott, boycott Burgerville. <laughs> boycott Burgerville. It's good to know. Um, well, thank you for being here. I appreciate the time and for letting everybody know. Um, you can find find it on uh, what is it? Facebook dot com slash Burgerville Workers Union. Burgerville Workers Union. Um, yes. And I will put the links in the notes and we'll share them on all of our social media. Thank you so much for being here, uh, Jimmy. Oh, we played your music too last week on the show. Yeah. I appreciate that. I heard that. Thank yeah. You so much for that. Yeah. That was uh, un like I had, I played, I pulled it up and put it on there and then you messaged me and then I was like, Oh shoot. That wasn't even, well, I guess that's synchronicity. So that's pretty good. Totally. Uh, well, 
Thanks for listening to Street Fight. Uh, we'll be back with your regularly scheduled programming. Peace. Bye.